Hello and welcome to the third part of my Necromancer series. This time we'll be looking at turn-based games, which basically means tactical turn-based RPGs and 4x games. First off we'll look at Age of Fear. This is an indie game 100% dedicated to necromancy. Whoever made this game obviously loves necromancy, so it seems like I'm not the only necromancer-loving, minion-obsessed weirdo out there. This game is pretty good. It's an RPG with tactical turn-based combat where you're the necromancer Krill, who is a sadistic, evil necromancer who truly values nothing but power. You just finished murdering some old master in a swamp shack, but not for learning the secrets of necromancy from him. Now you're basically out to conquer the world by killing everyone and turning them into minions. Krill is really not a nice guy at all. As discussed in previous videos, I want to see plentiful minions, useful minions, permanent minions, and a somewhat squishy caster, and this game does deliver on all these important pillars of good and satisfying minion gameplay. I enjoy the combat in this game. Positioning is important and so is unit composition. Units that survive battles get stronger and more experienced and can be upgraded. When you kill enemies, their comrades lose morale, and you can spook an entire army and make it rout if you play right. It's not without its problems though. It can have bad performance at times, even with just a few units, and the game is very linear. You don't get any choices or freedom to go where you wish because you're following Krill's story. What this boils down to is basically combat missions, one after another, with dialogue in between. It's not terrible, but I'd have a lot more fun with the game if it was opened up a bit. I'd like an overland map or something which I can march around on and explore in. That's my only problem with the game. I'd love to see the developer do this with an open world and possibly with more character and role-playing decisions. Playing Krill is nice as an ultimate evil bastard option, but it could be so much more. I think if you like the look of the gameplay footage I'm showing here, and you don't mind an indie game, you should probably give this game a chance. It's quite fun and there's obviously been a lot of passion put into it. The guy even made his own sort of cinematics with actual actors playing the parts of the necromancer and the old guy and shit. You can look at it on Steam. RPGs are well and good guys. I enjoy them a lot. But what about the large scale? A supremely powerful necromancer doesn't just mess about with small squadrons of skeletons. He commands legions of them, and rules an empire crushing rival nations on a grand scale. One of my absolute favourite picks for this has to be Age of Wonders 3. Although not immediately featuring a necromancer, with an expansion you get a very satisfying necromancer. Your necromancer could be human, high elf, dwarf, tigran, which is a feline race, draconian, halfling, orc or goblin. The Necromancer can also become a Lich later on which confers more bonuses and power. The citizens of your empire become ghouls, meaning that you get a ghoul version of the unit for the given race. For example, instead of human knights you get ghoul knights. The ghoul attribute provides the advantages of being mostly immune to the effects of bad morale and resistance to poison and frost, but gains the disadvantages of being undead including vulnerability to light, fire, and can be turned by priests, etc. It's possible to play a good, neutral, or evil necromancer, which allows for different magic depending on alignment. Enemy cities you capture can be released as vassals. This makes them independent cities which pay you taxes and fund their own armies, which is a good option. Also, they can be absorbed into the empire by transforming the city into a ghoul city, which is considered neither good nor evil. Otherwise, a captured city can be plundered, which slaughters the populace and destroys the city, reducing it to rubble, and provides you with a lot of gold and evil points. A ruined city can be reanimated, which will revive it as a ghoul city. Typically, my playstyle is to destroy and reanimate every city I come across to get the gold and evil points, while vassalizing distant, hard to defend territories so they can look after themselves and I don't have to defend them. In addition to having vast legions of ghouls produced by the cities in your empire, you may also produce special undead units using magic or special facilities within your ghoul cities. The game also has global enchantments which affect the world as a whole, as well as city-specific 
buffs and debuffs. One of my favorite spells is a global enchantment, which gives you a 35% chance to instantly resurrect fallen enemies that die in battles anywhere in the game. Although you get a lot of crap units most of the time, you can get lucky and find yourself possessing a fresh ghoul army made from the corpses of two feuding foes. Another good one is Blight Empire, which terraforms the land around your cities into blighted terrain, and this spreads out like a, a curse or a disease infecting the land further and further away from your cities. Eventually it can get right to the doorstep of your enemy and even penetrate into their territory, which is really cool. Living units on blighted territory lose morale and just are generally less effective in battle. A good example of a city debuff is Rat Plague, which infests an enemy city with rats, and these rats starve and kill the population of the city. The corpses are then added to your nearest undead city until the enemy can dispel it. Spells like this can be reinforced, which makes them harder for an enemy to dispel. Combat is extremely tactical, and includes flanking, morale, resistances, etc. So there's a lot of depth here. A lot of undead units can exploit the despair of enemy troops, so if you can rattle them with shrieking banshees and the chilling attacks of spirits, it's definitely beneficial. For the grand scheme of things, it honestly doesn't get much better than being a necromancer in Age of Wonders 3. You truly feel powerful on an epic scale, commanding vast legions of undead to conquer the world of the living with the support of vile enchantments and foul sorcery. The AI in this game is also decently challenging. Nothing compared to a good human opponent, but definitely considerably better than other games in the genre, which is essential for a game like this. Age of Wonders 3 is a fantastic game and I really recommend you try it. Age of Wonders is really really great, but it does have its limits. You're kind of limited to the sort of hundreds of units mark, but you might be wanting an empire with thousands of units, perhaps tens of thousands. This is where my next favorite game comes in, Dominions 4. If you're willing to trade some graphics and battle control for even more depth, complexity and variety, I'd recommend you get your hands on a Dominions game. The footage you're seeing now is from Dominions 4. Dominions 5 just came out and if you're looking to buy, definitely get the newest one. The Dominion games are all quite similar to each other and every new Dominions game improves upon the previous one. But typically it isn't radically different from the one before it. For example, I have Dominions 4 and Dominions 5 just came out. They did a bunch of improvements, mainly to combat, and added some new races and tweaks to existing factions but otherwise it's very similar to Dominions 4. For that reason I'll probably wait to purchase Dominion 6, but if it's years away I'll probably grab Dominions 5 in the sale. Now what's important to know is that I can only scratch the surface of necromancy in this game, because there's at least 6 different factions dedicated to necromancy here, and all of them do it very differently. So with that out of the way, I'm going to cover my 3 favourites, and only briefly mention the others. And I'm sorry in advance for the length of this segment, but believe me, despite the length, we are only scraping the surface of what Dominions has to offer. The middle era faction of Airmore is a successor to the early era faction of Airmore, a race of humans very similar to Romans, but with an interesting twist. You see, in the early era, the scholars of Airmore became corrupt and welcomed an evil influence into their empire which killed all of them and now they serve as undead. As a faction of Airmore, you control vast legions of undead Roman soldiers. Your units are skeleton versions of the classic Roman infantry, and I'm going to butcher a lot of these pronunciations, but here I go. Undead Hastati, Undead Triarii, Undead Velites, and so on. As Airmore, instead of nurturing and growing a population, you instead spread like a disease as you corrupt the lands, reducing the population of provinces to zero to make corpses, to in turn produce more undead. The tighter your grip on the land, the faster the population will perish and the more undead you get. It's an extremely satisfying experience to command these hundreds, eventually thousands of undead troops. The middle era faction of Asphodel represents a dying forest. Like Airmore, Lands in your possession are reduced to zero population and you get plentiful corpses for reanimation. 
However, you get a completely different kind of undead. Asphodel produces undead animals and undead versions of mythical forest creatures like satyrs and dryads, as well as the mannequin, which has skeletons whose bones have become overgrown with poisonous vines. The mannequin whip enemies of these vines, dealing damage and paralyzing them. Asphodel is a very interesting and unique take on necromancy due to the fascinating ne uh, units at your disposal. I've never seen this theme in a game before with undead uh, vine and crusted skeletons and so on. In the late era, you have the faction of Lemuria, which uses spirits, ghosts, and shades instead of physical undead like zombies, ghouls, mummies, skeletons, and so on. You can still create these things, but to do it you have to use rituals, as they aren't created by the faction itself. Similar to how in the previously mentioned factions, ghosts, spirits, and shadows are normally only available via rituals. As can be expected, your legions of ghosts are highly mobile, and can pass through enemy walls as if they weren't there. They also receive resistance to physical attacks, but only the best ghosts can deal physical damage. So if you aren't careful, your army of 1,000 lesser ghosts can be defeated by a single clockwork soldier, because they cannot damage it. Thus, a mixture of physical undead and ghosts tends to work well, as the ghosts will soak the damage and paralyze the living, while the physical units can dispatch golems and other threats the ghosts cannot deal with. If a blend of undead and living is more your thing, then the middle era faction of Scleria has you covered. Scleria is a splinter of early era Amor and makes up an army of living Roman soldiers combined with many powerful undead units. It's nice if you don't want a completely evil necromancer, because while you do get corpses, the population of your provinces won't reduce to zero, leaving you with enough living legions supplemented by undead. Nazca is a faction of winged humanoids ruled over by mummy kings. My experience of this faction is only as their enemy. They produce powerful mummy commanders and flocks of highly mobile undead harpy-like creatures, along with your bog-standard undead troops available to all factions such as zombies, ghouls, and skeletons. The late era faction of Agatha is also capable of necromancy. It features cave dwelling, mostly blind humans that can reanimate their former masters, the ancient ones, who are strange Lovecraftian beings which serve as undead mages, priests, and elite troops. The Agathans only use the best armor, and as such you'll be in command of heavily armored humans with poor vision, bolstered by rotting Cthulhu-like monstrosities. It's a great faction, especially if you're interested in something different. The late age faction of Cetus also offers necromancy and is a race of humanoid lizards which have access to lizard undead. The zombies have talons and teeth and therefore deal more damage than standard zombies and the lizard forms of their troops tend to be slightly better than standard undead. I don't have much personal experience of the faction but as I played Lemuria in multiplayer and my sister played Cetus, it seemed very good. The faction has access to mummies as well. Now aside from the undead units each faction has to offer, there's also dozens of interesting undead summoning spells and rituals available. I'll just mention a few of the more interesting ones. There's a ritual which lets you summon a former demigod that's been imprisoned in a realm of suffering for millennia. The unit is very powerful but utterly insane and rather uncontrollable. Another good one lets you summon an undead blob. It consumes the bodies of fallen enemies. Each battle you put it in, it grows larger. If you allow it to, it will grow so large that you can no longer control it and it becomes a terrible enemy. This actually happened to me and my sister in our game. And while we were fighting our enemies, we also had to deal with this giant undead blob which was rampaging from province to province destroying everyone in it. It was a lot of fun. And that concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed. I'm sorry it took such a long time for me to put this video out, but I got sick. You see, some minion-hating bastard coughed on me, just so that I get sick and lose my voice and not be able to put out important news about necromancy. Some real sick folks out there, people, trying to silence Cheb Gonads. They don't want the truth to come out about necromancy. 
They want to hide all the good minion games from everyone and make everyone play shit games, man. They want people playing boring shit where you just control one character. The same shit every game offers. Disgraceful. The next video I put out will probably be about real-time strategy. Hope you come and watch that one.